Here's a quick disclaimer. The views, statements, and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers. The statements are not intended to be product claims or medical advice. Hi, Diana Freik here. I'm the host of the Gooder Podcast, where I get to talk with the powerhouse women in the food, beverage, and wellness categories about the business of consumer packaged goods, branding, and leadership. This episode is brought to you by Retail Voodoo. Retail Voodoo is a brand development firm providing strategic brand and design services for companies in the food, wellness, and beverage industries. Our clients include Starbucks, Kind, RAI, PepsiCo, Hi-Key, and many other market leaders. So if your goal is to crush your competition by driving growth and disrupting the marketplace with new and innovative ideas, give us a call. You can find out more at retail-voodoo.com. Well, today I'm very excited to chat with my guest. Haley Wiedenbaum is CEO and co-founder of Everhem. Growing up, Haley spent countless hours reconfiguring the layout of her bedroom furniture, all the while gaining an informal, all bite, invaluable education in how best to utilize space. Over time, her design desire to design interior spaces grew from a childhood pastime to a burning passion. Haley's impeccable design instincts and efficient bootstrapping approach to challenges are only outdone by her disarming positivity and charm, which you guys will meet soon. A devoted traveler with Los Angeles roots, Haley effortlessly infuses signature California tinged cool with worldly inspired accents. She appreciates the styles of the past, but values modern comfort and functionality first and foremost. Haley's mission is to design homes that make people happy. Happiness makes happiness looks different for each mm-hmm. client, and that is the challenge that Haley looks forward to solving with every project. Haley, welcome. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, Diana. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Are you in LA today? I am in Los Angeles today. So I was born and mm-hmm. raised, and born and hard, raised. Very hard to ever leave this city. So, are you in LA proper? Or are you in one of the? Uh, we're in the, in the San Fernando Valley, actually. So Okay. Oh, yeah. you're in the Valley. Oh, when I was growing up, that was a thing. Yeah. There's no Valley girls anymore, I'm assuming. <laughs> I, I, I lost the accent, the Valley girl you accent. Lost- <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, when I was a kid, you probably know this. When I was a kid, I grew up, uh, I grew up in La Mirada and then Mm -hmm. moved to Thousand Oaks and the Thousand Oaks when I was a kid was not the Thousand Oaks of today because I used to go (laughs) messing around in the swamps and pulling cattails and bringing pollywogs home. Like now it is unrecognizable to when I was a kid. Yeah, now it's much more built up, but you know, you, you find pockets in the valley that still feel like you're not like in the city, which is really nice. I love that. Wow. Well, I got to tell you, you're not in the, you're not a company or founder owner of a company of brands that I typically talk to. I'm kind of starting to branch out a little bit Mm -hmm. because I'm finding uh, amazing folks like you. Um, Tell us a little bit about Everhem because I think my audience may not have heard about you before, or maybe they have, and I'm just being daft. Let's talk about who is Everhem and what do you stand for? What's your mission? Okay, so you know we're we're a fairly new company. Um, we um, our mission is to change the perception of window treatment. And as you um, said beautifully in the bio, I started my career as an interior designer, and I was an interior designer for about eight years. And through my trials and tribulations with clients and projects, window treatment was always one of my biggest hurdles. I tried a variety of different brands, a variety of different strategies in a, in creating window treatment, installing window treatment, and it was always a huge headache. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there's got to be a better answer out there. So I, you know, about four or five years ago, I started to dig into it more. I had some great contacts in the industry here in Los Angeles. And I just started asking questions like, where are you, where are we making this? Where are the workrooms? Where are we sourcing the fabric from? And 
I just sort of had like an aha moment. I was like, okay, I see all these elements that everyone is trying to do. And I see that it's a very antiquated industry. You know, we've been doing window treatment for for our homes for years and years and years. And no one's, there are some companies out there have been trying to perfect it, but I knew in in my heart that I was like, I could do this better. I just had this like weird passion to improve the process. And I think mm-hmm. it came from the fact as an interior designer, window treatment is such a crucial part of the process that is often like a forgotten essential in the home. So I really yeah. wanted to change people's perception to start thinking about it at the forefront. You know, even if you're building a home, start to think about it when you're building the home. Or if you move into a home that's that's already built and you're furnishing it, you need to think about it in the beginning for many reasons. For a function reason, you everyone has windows. So you have to cover your windows. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know, everyone has to think about like the function of why I need to cover my windows and then aesthetically too. You don't want to just put something completely utilitarian on your window and sacrifice the design. So really with Everham, we're trying to marry like the functionality of window treatment with a design driven mentality. And that was really how I got into it. And at the same time, when I had this aha moment, I was, to be honest, a little burnt out on interior oh. design. So like, I, I guess I was, I was the burnout and, you know, full yeah. transparency as an interior designer it's, it's the money is not flowing. <laughs> it's really hard because one, you have to gain the clientele. And, you know, nowadays I think a lot of people are using social media to, to really help their client list. Back 10 years ago, social media was just starting. Right. So for me, it was more word of mouth, which was yeah. great because in Los Angeles, a lot of people buy homes here, which is great because people want to furnish those homes because most of the time they're like forever homes, right? Yeah. Um, So I had a lot of first home buyers, which was really great because everyone was so excited. However, (laughs) you get into the budget and everyone just bought a home. And in Los Angeles, it's the the prices of homes are ridiculous. Right. It's like everyone is cash poor because they bought their home and then they don't have any money to spend on furnishings right. or accessories, window treatment. So I was mm-hmm. sort of that battle of helping people understand like, you know, you need to furnish this home right and with furniture that's going to last and 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 art and paint and window trim that's going to last. So yeah. it was it was challenging I think to deal with the personal emotions of someone's home. Yeah. Um, you know, if at times you feel like a therapist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's true. You know, my husband and I, we hired an interior designer when we did a remodel years ago. And I remember this person coming in and saying, now, sometimes there are some challenges because you find out where your differences are. So she said, I think she said something along the line of my job is to find the you know, the compromise. Yes. So like we're going to happy medium. Kind of, yeah. You, know, you have, you have couples that have very different styles and you have to find a happy medium yes. where everyone, everyone's happy with the, the finished product. So exactly. I, I was doing that. And as I said, I was getting a little burnt out and I just, it's sort of just like the timing worked out where I was sort of like, had a couple clients and I had time to focus on starting an actual business. And um, I asked my husband to help me start the business. So he was at the time a graphic designer, but his first first life before that was in finance. So I was like, I was like, I need you to help me run, you know, all of our numbers and the financial aspect of this business. But I also want you to help me brand it, name it, and oh build, my the web- goodness. build the website. So um, he was a little nervous, but I just was like, we're going to, you know, partner in this together. And and we took the leap. And in 2018, like end of 2018, he, he quit his full-time job and I was still doing interior design projects on the side, and we founded the business in 2019 and officially launched August 2019. So we officially launched our like online website because sure. we're like a direct to consumer is what we mm-hmm. are at our core, mm-hmm. and um, we wanted to be able to service 
uh, clients and designers throughout the country. So that's why we went online first. I am curious. I have I have a few questions. I'm okay. throwing all the questions. I'm all those questions that I said we were going to go through. Those, they're all out the door. We're going to talk okay. about a couple of. Things. I'm ready. So first of <laughs> first, yeah, first of all, l- right and left brain. Your husband is an yes. anomaly. That's an anomaly yes. because I, I have and- my husband is like that too, and they are very few and far between. If they're good at both sides, they're unicorns, right? I so, know, and and that's yes. the thing is like his whole life he was. He was told, you know, you be you should be a doctor, a businessman, or a lawyer. So that's the track he went down. Yeah, and tried to get into finance, and then he met me, who I went to school for communication. I thought I wanted to do hotel sales. Uh huh. I saw that. Learned, yeah. Yeah. Quickly learned I do not want to do hotel sales. I want to <laughs> build the hotel. I want to design the hotel. So yeah. while my husband and I were dating, he saw me transition mm. to go back to school for interior design, and he literally thought I was crazy. He was like, mm-hmm. "This isn't stable." This, and I was like, "I want to be happy waking up every day, and I want to be passionate about my job." Yeah. So you know, I went back to school for like a two year program, and then I also worked while I was in school. So he saw that, still tried to stay in the finance world. He became pretty miserable. And Mm. I looked at him and I was like, what do you want to do? Tell me what you want to do. Like if you could do anything tomorrow. And he's he's like, I want to design logos. I was like, let's do it. Like you can become a graphic designer. So then he went back to a similar program that I went to in in LA and Mm -hmm. became a graphic designer. And it's like- That's fantastic. I know all the building blocks like obviously make sense now. It's like, yeah. you know, it's all a risk, but we 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 made we made it work, I guess. And and today, I, you know, we're working together still. So that's really <laughs> great. Following your following your gut. I I don't necessarily think it's following your heart. I think it's following your gut, right? Because yeah, there's a difference between loving something. Like for example, I. I love pastries, but if I had a pastry every single day, I would hate it really, really fast. Right. So, but if I loved making pastries, that'd be a different thing. So Mm -hmm. knowing that you want how you want to participate is a really great, that gut instinct that you both have is pretty great. I love hearing that and that you're vibing off of each other. I think as the kids say like that, you know, um, that you're leveraging what the other person is doing is also shows a really mature relationship because it's really easy. It could have been really easy for him to be jealous in what you were doing and not gone the route. And yet here you were cheerleading for him and he took the leap based off of that. So it really says a lot about your relationship, but it really does. Yeah. And we, it's a, it's like a push pull. I think I am the type of person, if I get an idea in my head, like it's going to happen. Like yeah. there's, yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of, I, I like to say a lot of women, we're just like, we make, we make stuff happen. Yeah. So he really kind of doesn't, you know, hinder me. He supports me. He yeah. raises me up and he's like, tell me what you need. How can I help you? Like, where do you, yeah. you know, where do you see this business? Yeah. You know, we started from the branding because that was really important for us. Yeah. Um, that from the look and feel of the yeah. website and the branding, that everything was exactly what we were hoping for. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we sat down together and really dived into what mm-hmm. we want Everhem to be. And yeah. I would say that the, uh, the, the strategy and processes is probably our weakness. So once we got things off the ground, we yeah. hired amazing people who are yeah. now helping us with that part of the business. That's great. So we, we realize like what we, what our strengths are and our Absolutely. weaknesses are and we, yeah. we fill the gaps. Yeah. Well, let's go back to, okay. You've launched in 2019. Yes. And six to nine months later, COVID hits. I want to say that your business took off during that time. Am I nuts? So it's kind of a, you know, for a second, it was, we were closed because our workroom, right, right, right. All the other production facilities that were making things had to close down. So basically from March, March and April, of 2020, we had to close. We did not close our online shop. We communicated right. with our customers, communicated with clients who had current orders in the queue. 
And everyone at that time was so understanding. Everyone was in the same boat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as you said, we were such a new business that we kind of like had like a deer in headlights, like, what are we going to do? Luckily, all of our vendors that we work with, we were all, you know, supporting each other and understanding as well. Mm -hmm. And we actually communicated to our clients, our customers, our potential customers that we're still open and we're still taking orders. Mm -hmm. Like once we open back up, we will Mm -hmm. fulfill orders. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we're, we're offering, offering quite a big discount. So kind of to help, um, incentivize people to continue ordering with us. We provided a, a big discount that I don't think we'll ever do it that big of a discount again. <laughs> but um, yeah, learning curve. <laughs> but we, you know, we were trying to like tell everyone, you know, tell tell our consumer base, like we're not going anywhere. We understand the world is at like a standstill, but we believe that like we'll get back open one day. And we opened back in May of 2020. So it was only two months. And yep. I think the worst part of it was just lead times were so slow because they, yes. the, the, the workforce couldn't come fully back into mm-hmm. the, the, the workrooms and everyone was on the same page. And, you know, today our, our lead times have caught up and we're, we're at like a six week to eight week lead time, which is a okay. lot better than a lot of lead times for our industry. Cause a lot of furniture is still like, still like, half a month, like a half a year, six months. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we make everything in Los Angeles. So I think that was what was really helpful is that we didn't have to deal with, you know, overseas production. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were very hands-on. I remember, you know, going to our workroom in Los Angeles, like with like, I think a ma- three masks, maybe mm-hmm. even like goggles and people are like, you should wear goggles. I know. We you know, just didn't pretty- know, right? Yeah, exactly. And then another crazy thing that happened to us in 2020, we had one son in 2016. So he was about um, like three, three years old. And I got pregnant in February 2020. Mm. And I got pregnant with identical twins. Holy moly. Yeah. And so. Busy mama. Yeah. I was, it was the biggest shock of our lives and they uh, were born in September, 2020. So while we're, everyone's dealing with the pandemic, this thing that no one's ever dealt with, we, I was also pregnant with twins, which is the craziest thing I've ever had to deal with. Cause I, I knew what it was like to be pregnant with one. So I had a comparison and I was like, this is not normal. Mm -hmm. Like this is different than before. And so it was definitely a crazy time in our life. And it was just um, Adam and I for about the first nine months. And Mm -hmm. then right before I gave birth, we realized we need to start hiring people to help us. I remember like getting rolled into the C-section room, the OR. I was still like texting with someone about an install. It was like... (laughs) So, you know, yep. like when you own your own business, you can't really take maternity leave. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. <laughs> I did exactly. take a little time off to recover, and but my, my husband didn't. He was back to work the moment we were out of the hospital, basically. Yeah, so, it's just where you are when you're in those infancy stages. You guys have certainly... Yeah grown since then. So it's kind of fun to hear about those first few days. Yeah. And then back to the growth. So what what everyone saw in the home industry is um, everyone was focused on the home because everyone had to be home. So yes, our industry, I think, benefited from the silver lining of COVID, I think, Mm -hmm. was that everyone was home and everyone was renovating, furnishing, now like suddenly working from home and actually the window treatment needed to be replaced because the glare into the computer or was really yeah. hot. So yeah. all those things kind of helped grow, um, grow our business. And, and we were shocked to be honest, like how, how much, um, how many orders came in, especially during 2020 and, and beyond that. So. Well, and- perfect because people are self-installing your products, right? Yeah. So we, you know, we really wanted to, everyone's like scared of the window. So we wanted to kind of, make everyone understand that you can measure yourself and you can install if you have the right tools and and a partner helping you. Mm -hmm. Um, There are still those large projects and most interior designers don't want the liability. So they want our help in measuring and install. And we are currently growing and scaling our 
professional installer network to Not, be able to oh. provide that. So it's really important because yes. I, when I was an interior designer, I really want you know the professional to be the one measuring so that my right. clients don't blame me for measuring wrong. Um, yeah. But you know, finding a valuable partner mm-hmm. like Everhem is really important for interior designers so that they can just know it's being handled. Yeah. And so you know, we've always offered that, especially in Los Angeles, because of the network of installers I know mm-hmm. here. So we're trying to grow that network in major cities throughout the country to offer that same customer experience Mm -hmm. to to everyone, to be honest, not just designers. Like there's some people who just want a professional to handle it from the beginning to end. So we we are growing that that program right now, which is really exciting because I think like anyone would be like, oh, you, you know, a professional can can come in and measure instead of me. Like, of course, always take that option because we're a hundred percent custom. So all of our uh, products are measured to like the eighth of an inch, which is great because they'll fit your windows perfectly. But when you're measuring, you want them to be pretty perfect. However, online, like we have done a really great job of enhancing the user experience to be able to educate someone on how mm-hmm. to measure and how to install. And I think in the last, you know, 10 years, everyone is all about, you know, DIY or doing it yourself. So a lot, a lot of our consumer base embraces that aspect yeah. and, and does it themselves. And we also yeah. do, we started design consultations virtually before, oh, nice. the, before the pandemic. It was always part of our business model. Mm. And everyone's leaning in to doing things on on camera. And so we do weekly, probably like tens, tens to 20 virtual consultations right now for people oh around gosh. the country. And it's, wow. and it's really helpful. Sometimes people need help measuring. Sometimes yeah. they need just help picking fabric. And yeah. so we're, you know, my CX team can help you with all of it. And I, you know, that's what's really important. And at the core of this, This business, like, yes, it's window treatment and it doesn't sound like super cool or sexy, (laughs) but at the end of the day, like I, it's a, you know, it's a finishing touch for your home. It's, it's so important and you want it to look beautiful. So like yeah. we are driving home the design aspect of things like every yeah. day, like it's so important to us. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. Now you talked about customers here and I want to, I want to talk about the fact that I know that you and your brand, your whole entire company is really very customer service focused. And many companies say that everybody customers yeah. first and et cetera, et cetera. I did a little research. I always research all my guests because I want to know who you are outside yeah. of just this conversation. And in fact, the ratings on your company are basically across everything that I've seen are incredibly high, really yeah. high customer satisfaction. So it must mean you're doing something a little bit different than others. So when you say you put your customer first, what does that mean to you guys? Well, I think my um, background in hotel sales, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. really like spawned my um, passion to provide exceptional customer service. So mm-hmm. I, before I got into like sales, I worked in hospitality. So I worked mm-hmm. front desk. Mm-hmm. Um, I answered phones for hotels. And mm-hmm. so for me, I got like a quick training on how to provide great customer service, especially in the hotel industry. You can get mm-hmm. like all sorts of people, right? Mm-hmm. That are, you know, paying good money and expect mm-hmm. a certain level of service. Mm-hmm. So I kind of took that training and applied that to all my interior design projects. And I think all my clients were so receptive that I was so personable and attentive and understanding of, you know, everybody's needs. So when I started Everham, I, in my head, I'm like, guy to everyone, to my husband, to anybody who starts working in our team, I just want everyone to be personable and, and go a step ahead, a step beyond. And so for us, that really means thinking about the project as a whole. So yes, we're just doing window treatment, but when you get on a virtual or you email us, we might say, oh, I understand you're trying to decide between the two whites that we provide. What is the paint color on your wall? Mm-hmm. So we're thinking about like a you know all encompassing, not just yeah. like the window itself. So mm-hmm. I, so customers feel like oh these these people like first of all know what they're doing, they know what they're talking about, and you know they're thinking about all the elements involved in in the process. And you know custom window treatment is not you know 
to be blunt, not cheap. It is an investment. And it is an investment that I encourage people to do once. And the only time you're replacing your window treatment is when you're moving to your next home. Mm. So the the purchase you're making today is something that is timeless. We want it to last. Mm -hmm. We want you to be happy with it in Mm -hmm. five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years. So I think just thinking about all those elements when talking to a customer allows allows us to just provide a little extra customer service that isn't maybe expected. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think a lot of people these days, like we have a chat, we have email, but it yeah. like literally goes to a human. In the beginning, it went straight mm-hmm. to me and my husband, Adam. Mm-hmm. So we would be replying to emails on the weekends while we had three kids. I don't know how we did it. But, you know, I just think that like little extra extra step you can do is so important and it goes a long way. Yeah. Well, I feel like I'm hearing when you're talking about your hospitality background, I have a friend who, who owns a hotel and we talked about how the difference between hotels that have a good experience and a great experience and a bad experience. And the, and really what it is, is it's anticipating the needs of the client knowing what they're going to need before they know so that there's no friction. So what I'm hearing from you is when you're saying you're talking about the whole project, you are, you have an anticipation that this person is going to be doing window treatments and they might be thinking of window treatments in the moment, but then once they get that in, then they step back and look at the whole project and go, Oh, I wished I would have made a different choice thinking about it this way. Yeah. The, your approach is to help them see what their needs are ahead of them because you've been there a hundred times. Exactly. And like, we'll we'll ask the simplest question that no one even sits to think about. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing in this room? What are you using in this room? Exactly. And like, I'll often get, you know, well, we just moved in, so it's going to be my office, but one day we hope for it to be a kid's room. So we kind of have to think about, okay, like that's the the journey that this room is going to go on what window treatment will kind of check all the boxes. So you're not changing the window treatment when you change the room. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I like that. Um, Anticipating the needs and not waiting for a customer to raise their hand. Like you're wanting to be ahead of that. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. And we've always had like a, you know, trust pilot or review system from the beginning. Cause I, you know, as a, shopper myself, a consumer myself, I go to the reviews. I think they're yeah. really important. And, and you know, the Trustpilot's a great vehicle to use for those reviews because they're, mm-hmm. they're from actual consumers that have mm-hmm. received our product or interacted mm-hmm. with our company. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, I want to talk a little bit then, you know, we talk about this timelessness of the product that you have and taking care of the customer, uh, what falls next in line is kind of trends. I know that you are yeah. really on top of trends. When you talk and you're talking about an investment like you are, many of the people that are listening to the show come from fast moving CPG where people are buying the product uh, daily, weekly, on yeah. a monthly schedule. Yours is a kind of a single time investment unless you're somebody that uh, has disposable income and as changing window dressings on a regular basis. Yeah. How do you guide somebody between uh, trends and kind of the long-term needs of a home when we're talking about when, you know, the, the window. Yeah. So when I was um, before Abraham started, I would go to these companies and they would literally have like, thousands of fabrics to choose from. And so I, even as an interior designer, was so overwhelmed. I'm like, oh my God, these are too many options. Mm -hmm. So I've always, at our core, wanted Everhem to provide like curated options. So Mm -hmm. what you see today, we have, you know, 12 essential fabrics, three Mm -hmm. shears, four stripes, four trims. And Mm -hmm. we also have a line of like woven wood. So it's very curated Mm -hmm. and we're growing Mm -hmm. it, but we're growing it at a pace where I'm not just going to include a new fabric because I suddenly see it everywhere online or on, Mm -hmm. you know, social media. I -hmm. want it to be something that two things, one, I know I won't get tired of in five years. And the second thing is it I w- would want to put it in my own home. It's kind of the litmus test. If I will put it in my own home, it's going to go on Everhem. So it's just a nice way to keep everything 
mm-hmm. very curated, as I said, and then not overcomplicate the process for consumers. Mm-hmm. And um, also picking colors that are neutral enough to be able to go with a variety of styles and designs. But I would say that for window treatment, like stay away from trends is my is my go-to answer because it's a big investment. You don't want to change it. You don't want to pick something that like you're going to get tired of in six months. And mm-hmm. um, patterns are, you know, can be trendy at times. So I often like to pick patterns that are timeless and classic, like a stripe mm-hmm. A floral can be, mm-hmm. um, which mm-hmm. we, I hope to I hope to get into florals one day soon, um, and just kind of keeping that interior design um, mindset in place when mm-hmm. I'm personally sourcing all the material we're going to use. And as we grow, mm-hmm. I just want that to be at the core of what we do because mm-hmm. I think that the hardest part for consumers is picking the fabric for their shades or their drapery because too Mm -hmm. many options, someone's like, I'm lost. You've lost me. I don't even know where to go. So that's the most important thing um, is, you know, I kind of, everyone's like, what's the trends for 2023 or 2024? And I'm like, I don't really like to talk about trends. I kind of want to talk about, I do see a lot of things coming back. So Mm -hmm. right now um, we are, just a couple of weeks ago, we launched cafe curtains. So oh. little, like, you know, above a sink or in a kitchen nook, like yes. little baby curtains. Yes. And I think that is something that is like nostalgic and totally. Um, we, and we basically brought that online because a lot of designers were requesting it. So the designers kind of helped me see like, what are the trends in the design community? Mm-hmm. And, um, that is this whole idea of like cottage core is like a design yeah. trend that's coming back. And I think it's, <laughs> you know, because of COVID, everyone, yep. you know, wants a simpler, more calmer pace. Mm-hmm. And that is like reflected in the interior design of someone's home. And um, I, I guess cafe curtains kind of make everyone feel maybe like they live in yeah. the French countryside again. Yep. And- <laughs> <laughs> or very did. very 19 late 70s early 80s influence for sure yeah, yeah. by so. by the late 80s those those were out I think they were out by the or the early yeah. 90s they started to go out yeah oh wow but then again we're only offering our cafe curtains in like our neutral shears so yeah. I wouldn't do Ch- it in like a crazy pattern yeah. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that I, I, I'm now I'm going to, I did not see that when I was poking around last night. I'm going to have yeah. to go back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you are running this business with your husband and every once in a while I have a guest that comes that is also running the business with the, their husband. I, yeah. I myself run a business with my husband and you know, those husband business uh, or spousal relationships or uh, familial relationships in business can be a little bit tricky. Tell us what sort of tips do you have for folks that are um, either working with a spouse or family member um, um, or uh, considering it? Like what kind of tips would you recommend to them so that your entire life doesn't evolve into a 24 seven hour work day? Exactly. (laughs) So I think like the biggest tip I can give anybody who's working with their partner is like, stay Mm -hmm. in your lane. We have our Mm -hmm. lanes and we have Mm -hmm. our strengths and we really Mm -hmm. try to stay in those. So he, uh, you know, Adam's CFO and our part-time graphic designer, I like to say, (laughs) because, you know, when we have a design project pop up, we'll work on those, but really CFO is his main title. And I am main, I'm CMO. I work on all the marketing side of things. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'd say we cross paths when he has a budget update or or from a marketing point of view, we're mm-hmm. working together. But when we're working together from I'm doing marketing, which I, I do love um, because I'm so passionate about how this brand looks and feels to, yeah. to everybody, he is working on like a graphic design project, which is his little passion. So it's a nice mm-hmm. one to overlap in working together day to day. We're working on something that we're really passionate about. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important if you are able to when you are able to hire more team members that they act as like <laughs> buffers in a sense. And it, and you are like a, a team, you know, sometimes yeah. when you're working with your husband, it's just you two, you yeah. guys can speak to each other in a way that you would never speak to a team a member. A little shorthand yeah. or, or Kurt, 
or so if you're in the office space with other people, obviously there's a different type of way you approach your partner. Exactly, um, it's kind of a buffer. I like to call it. Um, and then on the the twenty four seven live and breathe work, we are all about like work life balance. Like we are home by six p.m. with the kids. Mm for Mm -hmm. the chunk of time that they need dinner, bath, and bed. And Mm -hmm. sometimes we'll go back online if we really have to. But I Mm -hmm. always say, like, we're not saving lives. We are doing window treatment. So, Mm -hmm. like, me and my husband are on the same page that we have the same, you know, core values that, like, we want to be with family and we want to have our own lives and not just, um, like, live to work, you know? so Exactly. And so so I think it's important that you and your partner are on the same – Stay in your lanes, but then also on the same page about yes. where you, how you want your work life to be, and then also mm-hmm. where you want the business to be. You mm-hmm. know your goals in five, ten years. Yeah. Um. So we we often align on that. We we do align, and we also like regroup about it, have discussions mm-hmm. together, and we're kind of we like look at each other we're like. Ooh. We look at each other, for, like, can't believe we started this business. Can't believe we have three kids. Can't believe two of them are twins. Like, <laughs> we kind of have, like, pinch me moments all the time. So, wow. it's, you know, it's kind of exciting and fun. And we both don't mm-hmm. take things too seriously. We like to still, you know, enjoy life, yep. have fun. And, mm-hmm. you know, that would be my best advice is, like, this this life can't all be about work. Yep. But if it is about work, like, make it fun. Yeah. So. And celebrate, celebrate the wins. Hey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so we're so focused on like the, we were so focused on the day to day. Now we're so focused on like the monthly numbers and like, you just got to step back and just be proud of what you've accomplished thus far. Yeah. 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 Well, tell us what advice would you give to somebody who's following in your footsteps? And I'm talking about in this you want to take on something big. I, I'll step back. Like I said, many of the guests that uh, that or many of the people that listen to the show are in fast moving consumer packaged goods. And yes. that means uh, most of those products have a pretty low barrier of entry. Mm-hmm. You've got something that's a little bit more complicated. You've got a supply chain that is slower than many, not in all instances. Mm-hmm. And you don't have as many bits and pieces as maybe some food brands do, but what you're looking for is a larger investment from people, uh, from customers. What, what advice do you have to somebody who's wanting to start something? I'm going to say this big, <laughs> this big, I it think, is big. <laughs> I know some might, well, first of all, it's like a very complicated yeah. product window treatment. So sometimes yeah. my husband is like, why did you choose window treatment? <laughs> Could have chosen anything else. Um, so I think my biggest advice to somebody is to do your research. So I luckily was in this home industry business. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I lived and breathed this industry for, for eight years and also got my like hands dirty with window treatment. Like I try, tried what didn't work, what did work. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. really just like the trials and tribulations and doing your like research and development Mm -hmm. before you like hit the launch button, I think Mm -hmm. is really important. However, we have done things that have completely failed even after doing a bunch of research. So that is obviously okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it's important to just keep trying and, and, and innovating and reiterating, but at the mm-hmm. forefront of everything, you know, do, do some big um, exploration of the field you want to go into mm-hmm. and really like immerse yourself in it. Um, but I do think like everything you do in your life kind of leads you to where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So my hospitality background yeah. would, it was so helpful into launching the business I want today. And I didn't obviously know that when I was in the hospitality business. So there's clearly like a through line that and connection that everybody has. And you just have to kind of see it and let every, you know, everything does happen for a reason. But I believe that like you can push things forward if you really believe in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I think my husband, when I gave him the idea of starting a window treatment business, he probably had like a billion question marks in his head. Probably. But we just, you know, made it made it work and made it yeah. happen. And it's 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 really really hard. So I don't want to like 
you know, devalue the fact that like we have tough days and we've had really tough days. Um, but when you get to see like a little light at the end of the tunnel and that affirms that what you've put all this work mm-hmm. into is actually working, it mm-hmm. just like energizes us. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it, that's what, that's, what's really great for me is like when I see something working, even if it's like a glimmer of something, like, like you said, like a little, I still get the trust pilot review. So if I see a good review from somebody mm-hmm. I've never even talked to or met with, it just like motivates me. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. what I started this business for. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's really important to me that that entire aspect. Love it. Yeah. You said something that is really true. Um, I've met a number of people that have graduated over the last few years. Uh, it would be no surprise that a lot of people reach out to me and want to learn about the industry and how to get into it. And oftentimes I hear, well, I don't want to, I don't want to just take any job because I don't know if it's going to get me somewhere. And I always say, yeah, just like you said, like even things that I learned when I was working in fast food, I use every day in my job. First of all, I think everybody should work hospitality of some nature, whether it's a hotel or fast food or restaurant, because the learnings of people interactions happen yeah. really fast and the feedback is instantaneous, right? If yeah. And it's okay wrong. if you like, yeah. yeah. And you try something and you quickly yeah. learn, you don't want to do that. So I, so totally for, for what you do, I, or what you, yeah. industries you've worked with, yeah. I thought I wanted to be a chef. So I worked mm. one day in a kitchen and then yeah. I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> so Exactly. Like, you just look yes. and learn quickly and then just, you know, the the doing something that maybe you're scared of doing or you don't think is a right fit, you'll still mm-hmm. learn something from it. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us what's next for Everhem. Okay. Well, so many things. I mean, every every uh year we kind of like set out our goals and I think this year brand expansion is like a huge thing for us and just making our um increasing our brand awareness through like a lot of marketing efforts that were not in place the last three years. Mm -hmm. Um, We're luckily at a place where we can start spending money on, you know, paid media and um, sponsorship opportunities. So I'm really excited to kind of just spread the word about the brand. And another big thing, um, which is so important to us from the beginning is our website. We are doing kind of a new, like a next digital chapter which we're, we're really proud of what we have put out today that we launched mm-hmm. three years ago, but we want to mm-hmm. kind of keep up with the tech yep. industry. So yep. we are going to be doing kind of a, an enhancement of our entire mm-hmm. website this okay. year, which will just help with user experience. You know, mm-hmm. we learn, you know, like through our customer feedback and like frequently asked questions, like what are we missing from the website that people really need to know about? So mm-hmm. I'm excited to kind of put that in, implement that into web form. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, those are, I think are our two big goals. So excellent. We're, we're Love it. Excited. Yeah. Oh man, Haley, I am. I'm so enjoying this conversation. Our time is almost up, but I have one last question that I like to ask absolutely everybody that's kind of not related to the, uh, the everything that we've been covering. Um, and that's this, are there any women leaders or rising stars out there that you would like to elevate for the work they're doing right now? Jeff, I love this question. I love that you ask all your guests this question. And um, I think for me, I have like a personal answer and mm-hmm. a kind of a bigger picture answer. Mm-hmm. Personally, um, I'd like to elevate my sister. Who I have an older mm. sister who has been like my biggest supporter of this company and my life forever. Mm-hmm. She um, has always been there for me, rooting me on, there for advice, there to help me with Everham, like at the drop of a hat. So she um, currently is diving into the world of photography. So she is now taking taking the photos for Everham for a lot of our oh, projects. Nice. So, mm-hmm. you know, she is just following her passion now. But I think really her passion is kind of 
lifting and motivating her her friends and her family. So mm-hmm. I just feel really lucky that she is my sister and mm. I get to have that fan. Um, she's like my number one fan, I think, which is really, really nice for me to Super fan. To say. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, I, and it's just me and my sister. So I just feel really lucky that we have that sisterhood relationship. Um, so I'd love to every day want to elevate her. And then kind of a bigger scope is the women in the design industry. So like that's where I got started and I was inspired by all the interior designers, um, especially women that um, had done it before me. And this industry is very hard to navigate and it every year it's shifting and you have to kind of mold yourself to where you need to be in regards to building a business and making money. And I just look up to all of the women in interior design for what they're doing as as uh, at, because they inspire me and they motivate me to create a product that makes their jobs easier in a sense. Mm, so I, I you know, I'm I'm excited to continue to build my relationships with the women in interior design and elevate nice. them. I love yeah. that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. This has been a pleasure to speak to you. Yeah. Well, hey, we've been talking with Haley Wiedenbaum, CEO, CMO, and co-founder. <laughs> I how guess many, so. How many C-suites do, you, do we need exactly. in there? Too many. Uh, yes. Of, of Everhem. Uh, Haley, where can people learn more about you and your company? Uh, Everhem.com is the best way to learn all about us. And that is E V E R H E M, exactly the way it sounds. Everham.com. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for your time today. I'm so happy to have spent time with you. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys do next. Thank you so much. You bet. Hey, I want to thank you listeners for your time today. If you like this episode, please share it with a friend. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and we'll catch you next time on the Gooder Podcast. Produced by HeartCast Media.